live, and it is that time. Hey, Come on in, Nathan. Yep. What's going on, everybody? Nathan King here. Jason Caldwell from uh, Auburn Undercover, Auburn 24-7. It is a gorgeous day here inside Jordan-Hare Stadium, and uh, we're just excited to be in here for such a huge matchup, Jason. I mean, we, we were talking about it before we got rolling, but really the first two games of the season, all you're saying is, well, you know, we'll, you know we're going we're gonna to learn a little bit more about Auburn. They'll probably do pretty well in this game, but this is obviously a huge matchup on, on both sides. And really what we've been talking about all week, Jason, it, it seems like there's, there's not really one area of the game where you'd expect either one of these teams to have a massive advantage. I'd be pretty shocked if this wasn't a close game throughout. Yeah, I, mean, I, I kind of think very similar to last year um, where you look at it. Uh, even though the turnovers were even, turnovers made a huge difference in that game. Yeah. Penn State played basically a Hail Mary interception. Auburn got nothing out of. Auburn, that, that first play of the, early in the second half, Penn State goes down and scores a touchdown. That's a swing. The same thing could happen in this game today because I just don't think either team's going to run away and hide from the other one unless there's a bunch of turnovers involved. I think that's the only way. I think this is a, you know, close to the vest. Now, you're going to take some shots if you're Auburn. Penn State probably will too with that veteran quarterback, but I would expect this one. Auburn's kicking game, um, special teams could, could come up really big, and people might not be able to tell it yet, but it's a windy day here. It could be windy at Jordan-Hare Stadium. We've got a pretty good breeze today, which could impact this game as well. Yeah, you, you referenced him there a second ago. Sean Clifford, obviously, Auburn cannot have anything near a duplicate performance for him if they want any you know, hope of winning this game. 28 to 32 in State College in this matchup last year. Um, there was underneath stuff. I mean, he, he had the biggest thing was Auburn was rushing three and four and sometimes five, and they just couldn't get any pressure at all. I think last season you saw Auburn's pass rush, pass rush improve over the course of the year from what you saw there. Um, but that is a huge key in this game for them to be able to get pressure on Sean Clifford because he's not a guy that has always been the most even in his career. He's Correct. been a guy that's had mistakes. He's had pretty high highs, but he's had some low lows. And so if you're Auburn, if you get a chance to rattle him, turnovers, pass rush, the crowd advantage you have here early in the game, that'll give you a, a good chance, I think, to get ahead of the eight ball as opposed to last year when they were they were kind of playing from behind the entire game because they couldn't get this offense off the field. Craig, you got when Auburn has it, an opportunities for negative plays on defense, turnovers on defense, it absolutely must do those things. Because you look at it, one of the things that's been difficult for this Auburn offense is that they've been asked to drive 75, 80 yards every time. Yeah. Because the other team moves the ball a little bit, punt deep, and then you're starting on your own end of the field. And that's not a recipe for success for most offenses. It's absolutely not a recipe for success for this Auburn offense. So I think you look at it, can you give your offense some opportunities from a defensive standpoint? And then offensively, I mean, I've been, you know, we've been kind of talking about it till we're blue in the face on here on Orange Day, but um, can they create some explosive plays on offense? Um, again, it's hard to, to 14, 15 play drives that finish with touchdowns. Can you hit some of those in the passing game? I think if I'm Penn State, I'm stacking the line of scrimmage. I'm putting seven, eight guys up there, and I'm going TJ Finley. You guys beat me throwing the football, and, and we'll see if Auburn can do that today. Yeah, I think the biggest thing for Auburn, like you're talking about, their side of the ball at quarterback for Auburn, you're going to see Robbie Ashford in this game, of course, but the passing game is going to have to progress through TJ Finley. That's, that's just what we've learned these first couple games. If you're going to be throwing the football, it's going to be him. Biggest thing, I think, for him today, no turnovers, and, you know, if you can, if we see TJ Finley go out there, complete two or three, third and seven, third and eight with his arm. He's like, wow, you know, 20-yard completion. Yeah. It's almost like you have to have him continue to be a threat in this game in order to continue to, to rely on Tank Bigsby. Yes. Because Tank was so effective in this game. Jarquez Hunter sort of had a coming out party in this game. You want to give yourself the opportunity to continue to hand the ball off to them. So you've got to show your threats in the passing game. We, like you talked about, Javarius Johnson, you know, he's been the one mainly with the explosive plays. Shedrick Jackson has been a good option for them underneath. This is maybe the game you got to find one more guy yeah. to be able to, to kind of give you that different element to make them worried about the passing game. So like you said, they can't just stack the box every play against Tech Bigsby. Yeah, you know, and you look at their secondary, Joey Porter's a bigger corner, Johnny Dixon's a little bit bigger. Is this a Tavares Dawson? Is this yeah. a Coy Moore kind of game? Yeah. Those guys have a little bit more experience than a Camden Brown. they got to find somebody else. You're right. Best case scenario for Auburn is Penn State can't do anything about Auburn's running game. Yeah, I, I would expect them to keep adding guys in until they can, but this is not an overwhelming Penn State front seven. Um, they've been pretty solid, but if Auburn can find some running lanes and get that going, that's obviously best case scenario, but you, you almost have to go, what do, you, what do you expect? I expect Penn State to not let that happen and Auburn have to throw the ball early on. On the other side of the ball, Jason, there's an element for Penn State here that they didn't have last season. Nick Singleton, the five-star running back, Seems like their running game might take a step forward this year. They were one of the worst in college football, and it sort of showed from that game at the beginning of the season. Clifford had to essentially do it all himself. 
we've seen Auburn's run defense be pretty stout these first couple games, but now the litmus test comes. This is not, this is kind of a middle of the pack offensive line for Penn State. They're obviously bigger than what we've seen in the first couple games, um, but this is where that front seven for Auburn, talking about the front seven for Penn State, this front seven for Auburn is going to be tested in a big way because that's, that's, a, that's one of the most talented running backs in the country back there. He hasn't proven a lot yet. He's just a true freshman. Um, but certainly he's already flashed some ability. It seems like they have that element to their offense that they didn't have last season. Yeah, and I would expect to see a heavy dose of him. He's, yeah. He is a game breaker that they haven't had. Noah Kane was a solid between the tackles kind of guy for them last year. He wasn't a, really a threat for that offense. Can Nick Singleton be that threat? And if he is, it changes the dynamic of him, especially yeah. with their use of tight ends. You look at the, the big transfer wide receiver outside, all yep. of a sudden it becomes a much more dangerous offense. For Auburn, the, the goal is the same. Um, can you create pressure? Can you play a I, – I, you don't have to blitz a ton. Other people yeah. want to – you don't have to blitz a ton, but your front four has got to get home. And to me, that's the key for this game from an Auburn defensive perspective. The more pressure you can get with the fewer people you can have, the better case you have to, to have a winning performance on defense. So we may not see the orange jerseys today. Seems seems pretty unlikely, but uh, we're looking over here to our left. There's already the fans filing in. The student section is starting to fill up. Um, it, you were talking as we were coming over here, Jason. On the Penn State side, this is an excellent traveling group for them. We've already seen tons of Penn State fans. Auburn, though, has to take advantage of what will be an awesome atmosphere for them. Certainly, this isn't the Iron Bowl last year. This team is not as talented as Alabama was. You know, it wouldn't be as shocking for Auburn to limit them on defense. But still, you think back to games like that, you think back to games over the past, you know, 10 years. I mean, you yeah. know, as long as you've been covering this team, you can you can lean on this crowd if you're Auburn. And this, with the importance of this game and, and, and what this can do for Auburn moving forward at the beginning of the season, give them some good momentum and a good starting point. Um, the crowd has to come to play. I think they will. Auburn's got to lead on it and, and take advantage of some of that energy because we've seen what that can do for this team. Correct, and, and, it, and it's up, you know, the, the, the crowd can feed the team, but the team has to feed the crowd as right. well. That means that you don't have to get off to an explosive start where you score 21 in the first quarter, but you got to give some, hey, a little momentum play here or there, creating an early turnover. Those are things that feed a crowd and get it more and more going. I think that's that's where it comes back to today. I think the crowd will be in it, but they got to give them something to cheer about. For sure, for sure. Should be an awesome game. I know we're all uh, we're all really excited about it. Going to be 2:30 on CBS. First SEC on CBS game of the year, so uh, so that's a big deal. We're really really excited for today. Hope you guys enjoyed the pregame blitz today for Mr. Jason Caldwell. I am Nathan King signing off here at Auburn Undercover. Be sure to go check out auburnundercover.com, Auburn 24/7 for all your coverage during the game. So we will uh, we will see y'all during the game, and Jason and I'll check up with you guys afterwards for our reaction podcast. So see you guys later. Everybody enjoy the game.